Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Lucid, and we're back with another turn with Late Age Satis. And I promised you not much would be happening and as we speed through some turns. And as you can tell from this message screen, indeed not too much is going to be happening. So, without further ado, let's get through some turns real quickly. Uh, a demon has possessed a herd of swine and ravaged the province for a week. Sweet. Uh, units have gotten younger. And we have finished a palisade. So this is now uh, making us Saurmancers. We're getting our fir very first Saurmancer out of this fort this coming turn. And then this fort's getting upgraded, and we've got uh, this guy coming over here to do a lab and a temple. So we're a little not properly timed on that, but we barely have, like, we wouldn't have the money anyway if he was here. Um, well, yeah, we wouldn't. We're upgrading this as a castle, so we would probably, like, you know, make a temple or something here this turn. Uh, and we have started, okay, we have started this palisade here this turn, too, so. Um, being a little greedy, we're doing a lot of infrastructure, but this is a greed playthrough, right? Like, we've, we're friendly with all our neighbors. Now, you may say, well, you're existing by the grace of diplomacy, and that's not exactly true. We would, if people came and attacked us, and we traded for, which we will, the like construction zero earth two armor slap it on her she would kill everybody except maybe like garms from utgard i think she'd be okay against colossi warriors it would probably be a little close depending on exactly what i have researched but like astral shield's gonna go a long way against colossi warriors um and skeletal body too so i think we're fine there i think basically anybody that attacks us we would murder them with our god so while that is true, uh, we can play defensively and therefore do some of this greedy stuff with like putting up a lot of infrastructure. Uh, we're not really positioned to kill anybody. Like we're making, you know, two of these or three of these guys a turn. You can see we're making our first, or we're making another high priest. Uh, I think, yeah, it's because this guy's having to roll out. Um, I want to get more troops up here. I don't know what's in this throne province, but I want to have troops over here to potentially support attacking this throne with my god if I need to. The god is going to jump in this lake now. We've got a ring of water breathing on her. Um, you can see we've also put this sword on her, which gives her a tiny bit more defense and cold resistance and stuff. But, um, but yeah, we're not really positioned to kill anybody. You know, we don't really... We made some indie crossbows, so we have a crossbow stack, but, like, I'm trying to get up infrastructure. We're still making a few more... But like we're not we're not doing like Bogarus levels where we had full scale so we could make a lot more crossbows. You know, here we have no scales, right? So like the amount of crossbows we can produce isn't great. But also I'm like trying to throw together money to put up all these forts. Because our real thing, if you think about like what is our plan, our plan is to get research and to get tomb worms. And all that takes time. Um, we are looking to vulture for our first war. Which is not my go-to strategy, right? Like, if I'm playing a nation and we're strong out of the gate, like I, and I have a plan where I can survive, you know, somebody attacking me, normally that's not through my god magic phase jumping on them, right? Um, and if it's not from my god magic phase jumping on them, then that strategy probably will work pretty well if I'm attacking somebody as well. So I would rather have it where I could go win a very decisive first war and pick my neighbor and go fight them and all that, but that's not what we're doing here, right? Because we don't really have the kind of army to do that. So instead, we're going to wait for somebody to like lose a huge army and then try to vulture them. Um, but if that doesn't happen, we're not going to fight. We're just going to sit here and tech up. Um, it's kind of funny. I've seen Arco do this in a few games too. Um, not with like a hell bless like this. Normally with a hell bless like this, you really don't want to sit still because your income's going down from both death and from misfortune. It's just like, ugh, you know, you got to make plays. Um, but sadly, and that's like why this build is so weird, is we went hell, like hell scales, or I'm sorry, we went hell bless, but we don't, we, like, <laughs> our build is not that strong out of the gate. Like we can't even really decisively win a first war unless somebody suicides stuff into us by attacking us and we slam it with our god. And we can still win by like attacking somebody, they get a big army together, and then we jump into them with our god. It's going to be a lot harder in uh, enemy dominion. Just because we don't get fate weaving, which is really nice. Um, 
And we don't get Blood Vengeance, which is really nice for some mages and stuff like that. So, you know, we'll just uh, we'll deal with it the best we can. Um, let's go ahead and go now to turn 15. All right. And we are back with turn 15. Um, Boobs has claimed the Inner Throne, which is very nice. Uh, we had to move a Tomb King down here. Because uh, I didn't want to waste a god turn doing it. So um, they are making uh, more Tomb Worms, which is wonderful. Um, and we've got this claimed. So we've got uh, a trickle of Blood Slaves coming in. It'll probably be a lot. If we can get our god Blood Hunting, uh, we can go ahead and start like empowering a scout or something. Sadly, I don't have Zots. I don't think I have Zots. This is Bakamono. These aren't no cavemen. Yeah, I mean, these aren't horrible to empower on blood, maybe. Anyway, we'll probably just do a scout or something. Um, Zots are, of course, the ideal thing to empower if you're bootstrapping, but uh, beggars can't be choosers. Um, so yeah, we've claimed this throne. That's super nice. Uh, we, we'll just watch this real quick because there's not there's not going to be too much action this episode, folks. Um, anyway, the 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 point that I hope that I made clear is that just because we're not playing aggressive doesn't mean we're we're existing because other people are being kind to us, right? Like. We would kill people who attacked us, for the most part. I mean, it obviously depends on a great many things, but we would probably do that. Um, Vettiheim has attacked Phlegra. Um, we really are not excited about these developments. Unfortunately, um, we're Heat 2 here already, so Rimvedi are going to have, like, militia-level stats, and Jotun Hurlers aren't great. So we've done a bit of a PD dump in case he gets feisty and is just, like, somehow making his way to our throne. We don't really feel like asking him for a non-aggression pact. Um... We we might ask Utgard, but Vettiheim right now, they're a kind of minor neighbor. I really hope Flegger wins this against Vettiheim, too. I'm not excited about Vettiheim and Utgard pushing their cold dominion all up in my shit. But anyway, this should win in conjunction with 15 PD um, against these guys in heat. So um, we're going to keep reanimating worms. We're going to keep building our thing. I want to protect both the throne, which I like, think I need this throne. And the Palisade coming up. So it's worth making a small investment in case Vettiheim gets frisky. Um, the first Sarmancer we got is an Earth Random, which is really good. That's like the perfect random for my first one because I really want to get out searching Earth. We also need to get out sight searching uh, Astral. And sight searching Astral sucks as uh, Satis. Like it sucks really bad. Let me check my Indies real quick. Make sure I'm not missing any. Because um, ideally, you luck into, like, Crystal Amazons, and you site search Astral with them. So you can also site search Air. But we don't have anything like that. Um, the only Astral Mages we have are Saramancers. And if we're also going to site search for Earth, that means we have to run an Earth Saramancer and an Astral Saramancer over the same province. And these are slow to recruit expensive mages. That sucks. That sucks a lot. You can do arcane probing, but arcane probing isn't really that worth it in the late age. So, um, anyhow, our death income is not horrible. We're up at seven already. So we found a few death sites. I think I might have missed some of that in the news. We found a dying forest here, which is really good. Uh, death in nature, which is really solid. Um, gives us one nature gem income, which we're very happy with. We found some through events. Um, I think I've got the, this off. We've also got a burial mount here. We've got a labyrinth of skulls here. I think that's it. Wait, one, two, three. Oh, an enchanted tomb here. Four. And then do we get three out of this? Yeah. So I get that, that gives us our, uh, our seven. So that's pretty sick. Um, we're getting another tomb king this turn. And we're going to move over and see if we can take this. We're pinging this because I'm going to make a decision. And we're moving scouts. You can see me actually using scouts here. Uh, we're using moving scouts here and here because I want to see if Utgard... We can see this province. 
But one thing that would kill my god is like magic weapon garm herdings would just fuck her up beyond belief. Because this also is an Utgard Dominion too. So uh, there's a chance Utgard would just roll our god. And um, and furthermore, this Utgard doesn't seem to like scales. So it's probably some very scary garms. Um, we've gotten some afflictions. I don't think I mentioned it. We got never healing wounds and chest wound from uh from taking that throne out, which is unfortunate. Um, these both are kind of annoying. They're not going to impact our ability to kill like this for certain, and they probably won't even really impact our ability to take a throne that much, but it would mean that a hard fight against Garms or something, just forget about it. Um, so anyway, very important for us to see what's here and here. We won't know what's in the man's fort, but I don't think man's going to have too much, which we're like terrified of. Like we can beat the piggy, especially with this sword. So we'll just have to see. Um, anyway, that's what's happening here. Um, Marignan, you can see mustering some troops over here. They actually, this was Indy for a while. So presumably they're going to attack, uh, Arco. Oh. And then Arco attacks Bogarus here. I believe the god... We didn't actually check. Was this normal phase or magic phase? This was normal phase. So he normal phase moves the god here. And he's got the same god as I do. So that's super cool. Live action Little Mermaid. Very funny. Um, it's got an enchanted pike. Which is fine for repel and things like that. It's very killy. A decent set of armor. And it's got a ring of frost. Um, which is kind of nice. Um, paths it has are kind of interesting. Air 2, this is really nice. This is a far more budget Mother of Monsters than My God. Um, My God, if you remember, is Death 6. Um, it's, this one's higher in nature, but lower in blood. So, it's kind of strange they didn't, uh, go up one more blood to get Blood Surge. You would think that would be kind of nice. So, um, Arco's got Berserk and Invulnerability. Invulnerability, not amazing on Arco. Um, because it's really easy to put protection and wooden warriors and stuff on your guys. So, I, I don't, I'm not in love with that, but I think Undying's better, but a lot of people don't really love Undying very much. I think it's a little bit undervalued. Like, I think most of the time it's better than people think. But it really only shines once you get like region and stuff too on your because you know it's like okay well we dipped into undying but then we lose the unit after combat that doesn't feel great but once you get region on them then they'll region back up before combat ends which is kind of sick berserk though i fully approve of i think that's great there are major weaknesses in this build though um like for the if we're looking at it just for the bless uh we don't have magic weapons we don't have any resistances so um Berserker, very good, but, you know, also has, there's going to be a lot of holes in the uh, Park Companions. Um, but yeah, importantly, he can do Wailing Winds, Winds of Death and stuff. Um, yeah. He's, I, I think, the other thing is like air, especially low air is not really a great super combatant path. Um, cause like, you know, mirror image and, uh, fog warriors will get knocked off. Um, astral is a good bit better. So let's take a look at our God and compare, um, our God astral seven. Now the seven isn't necessarily amazing. If we're like, if our God was to fight theirs, um, Seven isn't necessarily amazing. Like, we could try to Soul Slate or whatever, but it's not like you get some crazy effect. But uh, Astral Shield is reasonably okay. Um, and a lot of it's okay, because if you actually do... Like, okay, you're not going to be blocking many attacks, but the attacks you do block, if you paralyze them, you can then pound the crap out of them in melee. So that's noteworthy. Um... Blood Aid is also potentially really good. Like, it's going to mean we can do damage reversal and stuff in the late, late game. Um, also, summoning a bunch of, like, really cool shit. Um, but yeah, I, 
Actually, I don't know. Ours are going to be pretty comparable in combat, to be honest. <laughs> I think I was trying to build mine up like, oh, this is going to be way better. It's probably not. In L.A., though, um, we're like in a, in a man versus man combat. His God and my God are probably the same. Like they were to fight each other. But versus troops, Astral's better than air. Like as a super combatant path, Astral's better. Because especially versus these scales armies that are really common in late age, um, because he just gets hit by like some magic damage and his mist form's gone. Um, I'm blocking three quarters of all attack of all normal attacks. Like it's a big deal. And then plus you get astral shield and we also get soul drain too. So we've got way cooler shit that we can potentially do as the game goes on. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and go to the next turn, which is turn 16, turn 16. And to continue though, um, I don't want to suggest that my build's better. Mine is so, like, it. mine's expensive. Even if I took it dormant like he did, you know, where he gets to have a few more scales, his is so much cheaper than mine. I mean, oh my god, mine is so expensive. And my build would be horrible on Arco. Not even just, like, the particular bless, but, I mean, like, Arco needs scales. You don't really want to torture scales. We found a Witch's Bog, so this is super tight. Another two-gem site. We really need these. Breaks us into water, which we don't have any access to yet. Um, I would love to empower my god in water. That would be like a major, majorly awesome thing because that's going to give us uh, liquid body and uh, moss. Uh, yeah, liquid body and moss body, which would be sick. Um, we okay. Well, Utgard attacks the throne. Right, the throne. We were pinging this turn, and we were scouting to see if Utgard attacks. And oh my god, guys, this bless that Utgard has. Fucking nuts. Magic weapons. Air shield. Shock resistance. Fire resistance. Regeneration. And to tie it all up in a nice little bundle, blood bond. That being said, he's got a major problem. And the major problem is that he neighbors man. And man is a nation that's very good at gifts of heaven. And once these guys are all blessed, he could potentially try to not bless them, which is the optimal move if he's fighting man. Because once Gifts of Heaven start coming out, these guys will explode. It's one of the reasons Fortitude is really nice, is because Fortitude will help deal with Gifts of Heaven bullshit. You will still get ruined by Gifts of Heaven, right? But it will take longer. Um, it's very bad. It's very, very, very bad. Um, like, Will of Fates and stuff might... I don't know how all that interacts with, like, luck with Gifts of Heaven and Blood Bond. That might help a lot, too. But... Um, this turn, I panic. So, there's a few things. Our God is here. So, okay, our God is in a theater of war. But this I do not like. I don't know if these guys are coming here, but these guys with this bless... This is like a nation-ending quantity of troops. Now... I'm on an alt. There's no reason for anybody to diagonal war me. Um, but he could potentially come over here and just take my fort. Just walk over here, put these guys on it, and take it. And it would be very hard for me to do anything about it. At least that's my thinking, right? Um, what's more terrifying is actually if there's a prophet in this army... And they come over here, and these guys wait, and the next turn they would hit me with the full thing. If that happens, I actually don't think I can block it. I think I just have to accept my losses and, and leave. It's It would be really weird for them to pick a diagonal war. Like, it wouldn't make sense unless they just wanted to, like, lift a fort off me. Which would be a kind of shitty thing to do. Because what they need to do is with this bless, and they have literally no scales. Um, they should go kill a neighbor. <laughs> and they should really be killing man. Because man has now picked a war with Utgard... Midgard, Midgard. And I believe they're pretty close to being on Midgard's cap, like they're winning. And this is a nation which is going to murder them in the mid game, I think. So it would seem to me. And they have an awake expander, which these guys don't care about. So it would seem to me Utgard should kill man. Um, because with a critical mass of these guys, there's nothing man can do. Like, man just doesn't have the tools to deal with this. Uh, the crossbows literally do nothing, and that's kind of man's whole thing for troops. And these guys have air shield. 
Um, you can try to hit them with like wardens and stuff. And, you know, great. Um, wardens can kill these guys, but they get killed so quickly, the wardens do in melee. It's like I've tried, and then the problem is that the wardens ever go into crossbow shooting mode. You, know, you can put a melee troop in there and hope they don't, but oof. Just gonna say, woof, this would be nightmare fuel for, for man if this guy attacks him with all these garms. Not just all these, but like. Imagine twice that many and just starts taking him. And it normally it's like, whatever, he could go attack, attack whoever he needs to kill with this build. You can't, you really don't want to neighbor somebody with gifts of heaven. Uh, Cause that's just the counter to this and it will ruin them. Anyway, um, I message Utgard. I'm like, Hey, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. By the way, do you want a nap? <laughs> Because uh, what I f figured out is I went and tested. He wasn't responding for a long time. Uh, and he responded like five minutes before the turn rolled and I updated my turn order. Um, and uh, yeah, so I went and tested how can I kill this many Garms if he comes on top of here. So I was basically taking all these guys, doing a move in patrol, having all these guys patrol, um, upping the PD to like 33, I think was the max I could do. I had to cancel some infrastructure. I think I canceled the lab. I'm like, I'm not going to build here if I'm not sure I'm going to keep it. Uh, cause I potentially have to abandon this fort if he moves these guys here and then takes it. Um, but if he were to attack here, which if his plan was to move these guys here and then take it, it would probably make more sense to attack me unawares with these guys this turn, which this is again, like I said, not what I think is a likely move, but I prepare for worst case, and this for me, even though it's not a great move for Utgard, uh, it is a worst case move for me, so I'm thinking about it. Um, I'm usually, if I don't have a nap with somebody and they have shit like this near me, I'm not going to be like, oh, things are probably fine because it doesn't make sense for them. Um, what, you know, anyway, Utgard gets back to me last minute. It's like, oh, yeah, we can have a nap. And I'm like, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. And I'm like, so Ugar tells me he also has a nap with all his neighbors, which is really strange to me. He should be killing somebody with this. Um, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, we have a nap, so I go back and do greedy stuff, like build more infrastructure. I don't patrol, and I move my god out to take this, because I just accept this throne we will never see again. Uh, in our cap, we've switched over to making our low upkeep guys as gold is going to be very, very tight for us. Um, more Saramancers coming out here. We're building a lab, so we'll be able to get Saramancers out of here. And this fort will be coming up very shortly. And I believe with that, we will end this episode here. And we will pick up on turn 17, where uh, still not a ton is is, is happening. Um, the, you know, the, the war here between Arco and Marignon and Bugaroos is still raging, but... Bogarus seems to have their... I mean, not Bogarus. Arco seems to have their feet under them now again. Like, their cap circle isn't owned by by Bogarus. Arco now controls their own cap circle. Marin East forces are being pushed back. Arco may actually be viable. So, we're just watching this and figuring out what happens. If either of our, these neighbors lose a huge army, we could be probably talked into fighting. Uh, and I think that's it. We'll see you next time. Hey, everyone. Oh, wait. Whoops. This was the next turn. I forgot to actually end the recording. <laughs> See you guys next time for real.